Seven signs God wants your attention. Yes, sir. Let me say a louder for my chosen ones in the back. Listen, family. Seven signs God wants your attention. Now, y'all understand something. If you're watching this video, then you're watching it for a very specific and special reason. Understand something, y'all. God speaks in symbols, signs, and parables. And so with that being said, if you're watching this, then this is a clear indication that God is speaking directly to you. Okay? Somebody drop in the comments and say, God is speaking. Yes, sir. Make sure you drop in the comments, family, and say, God is speaking. And so we're going to go ahead and get directly into this video. But before we do so, y'all make sure y'all leave a thumbs up on this video as well as subscribe to the channel. Yes, sir. And be sure to ring my bell so y'all can be notified after every video I post. So number one, it's going to be this family. Tragedy. Yes, sir. Let me say it louder for my chosen ones in the back. Listen, family. Tragedy. Okay. Y'all remember when COVID-19 hit? Yep. COVID-19, understand something, y'all. God got the attention of the rich, the poor, okay, the unhealthy, the healthy. He got the attention of everybody and everyone to where you had no choice but to sit down and listen, okay? And so you got to realize, y'all, God utilizes these type of situations so he'll be able to speak to you. Maybe he wants you to open up a new business. Maybe he wants you to strengthen your marriage. Maybe he wants you to leave your marriage, right? So whatever the case is, y'all, he's going to use that tragedy to get your attention. Maybe you lost somebody who was, you know, who passed away. Maybe you lost somebody who was close to you as a family member, a friend, right? But understand something, y'all. That tragedy was only used to get you to move in a certain direction, right? And once he gets your attention, then he will be able to get you to move in the way that he wants you to. Once he gets your attention, then he'll be able to get you to listen. Because oftentimes, y'all, we don't listen to something catastrophic happens, right? Somebody drop in the comments and tell me I'm lying if I'm lying. But most times, y'all, we do not listen until something bad happens. That's just how we're designed. And so what God does is he say, you know what? I'm going to utilize that because I know that that's going to get your attention. I'm not saying that God kills anybody. I'm not saying that God does anything bad. I'm not saying that he sends temptation your way. I'm saying that he allows certain things to happen. And so when that thing happens, it's only happening for the greater good. And y'all got to realize something. It's always going to be laws of polarity in every situation, which means laws of polarity is that's going to be hot, cold, good, bad, negative, positive. And so if you lost somebody, you got to realize that you're going to gain something. If you lost money, you got to realize that you're going to gain something more. If you lost a house, you got to realize you're going to gain a mansion. It's going to always be double for your trouble, okay? Realize what I'm saying, y'all. And so right here, y'all, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, it says this right here, family. It says, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I need y'all to realize something, y'all. Although you are mourning, although you are going through your situation, although you feel like you are helpless and hopeless, y'all got to realize something. The fact that you are mourning means that you are still blessed somebody drop in the comments and say i'm blessed yes sir make sure you drop in the comments family and say i am blessed i just need y'all to realize something god just wants your attention that's all it's nothing major he utilizes that tragedy because he know you're going to listen all right number two season of revealing okay let me say it once again y'all you're going to go through a season of revealing Oh man, this right here is my favorite because this is when you begin to see who's for you and who's not for you. This is when you begin to see what you're doing wrong. This is when you begin to see who you are as an individual. This is when you begin to see if that job is really for you. See, God is going to reveal certain people. God is going to reveal certain things. God is going to reveal the things in your life that are walking in darkness. Meanwhile, you think that it's okay. So you got to realize something, y'all. In order for you to get the blessing, you have to be ready and willing to go through the testing. Meaning, those things and those people who are not for you, you got to be willing and ready to see them be revealed 
Okay? Now, here's the thing, y'all. Everybody is not going to be revealed for the worse. Some people has to be revealed so you can know who to keep around so they'll be able to enjoy the blessing with you. Okay? Make sense, y'all? Realize what I'm saying. So, right here in Daniel chapter 2, verse 22, it says this right here, family. It says, he reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. Okay? Let me say it once again, y'all. Louder for my chosen ones in the back. Listen, family he says he reveals deep and secret things he knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him all right y'all got to realize something in order for you to get to the blessing that God has for you he has to do some revealing and so this is going to be a season of revealing if you don't get these things revealed it will torment you it will sabotage you and it will destroy all the things that God has for you I need y'all to realize something don't be afraid of this season of revealing somebody drop in the comments and say reveal God yes sir somebody drop in the comments and say reveal God Okay, and so with that being said, y'all, we're going to go ahead and move on to the third sign that God wants your attention. Number three, isolation. Yes, sir. Let me say a louder for my chosen ones in the back. Listen, family, isolation. Okay, see, oftentimes, y'all, we are afraid of isolation. We feel like isolation is not for us. We feel like God is punishing us because he has us in a moment of isolation. We feel like we're going through the worst I, I came here to let you know, y'all, that isolation is only placed here for separation to those who are going to torment and destroy your blessing. Not only that, y'all, but that isolation is used for you to understand who you are as an individual so God can speak directly to you. Okay? And not only that, y'all, somebody drop in the comments and say preparation. Yep. That isolation is used to prepare you to become a chosen one. That isolation is used to prepare you to carry out God's mission. That isolation is used to prepare you to carry out God's will for your life. Realize what I'm saying, y'all. You're going to have to go through isolation. How many people remember the story of Moses? Y'all drop in the comments and let me know if y'all remember. But if you remember the story of Moses, y'all, he killed the man. And when he killed the man, he was sent out into the wilderness, right? He went out into the wilderness, and that's when he discovered the burning bush. He was by himself, and that's when God was able to tell him the things that he wanted him to do. And that's the same thing with you. You're going through an isolation period right now. You feel like you don't have no friends. You feel like you're all alone. You feel like don't nobody understand what you're doing. You feel like can't nobody connect with you. I came to deliver a message to you to let you know it's only isolation. Okay, it is only isolation. Somebody drop in the comments and say isolation. Okay, make sure you drop in the comments, family, and say isolation. Number four, it's gonna be this, y'all slow motion. Mm. Slow motion. Now, again, y'all, a lot of us don't like this. I, me personally, I hate it myself. I hate, I can't stand slow motion. Which means whenever you have all your plans figured out, you got everything going for you, you have the, you got your talent, you got your gift, I mean you serving it to the world, you're making your money, you're doing everything, you getting notarized for it, you getting everything that's going your way. But then things just begin to slow down. Mm. I know I'm talking to somebody. Things begin to slow down and you're trying to figure out, you're wondering, why are things slowing down? Why am I not moving as fast as I was? Why does it seem like I'm moving slow, like I'm in the matrix? Why? Well, I come to let you know, God has not stopped you. He has only slowed you. <laughs> God has not stopped you. He has only slowed you, which means he's trying to redirect you, right? You're moving too fast. And it's not to say that you're doing anything wrong. You're just not doing it the way that he wants you to do it, right? You're not doing nothing wrong. He just slowed you down. He want to take the glory, right? He want to take the credit, okay? He want to display his greatness through you. And so don't get me wrong, y'all. You will be blessed abundantly. You will be able to live abundantly. However, he wants you to do it the way that he wants you to do it. Which means everything that you are gifted at doesn't mean that you was called to do. A gift and a calling is different. So you got to understand that, family. He has slowed down what's going on around you, right? Maybe you was doing great. You had your job. Everything was going great, amazing in your way. But God slowed it down because he has another plan for you. Somebody drop in the comments and say God has another plan. 
Yes, sir. Make sure you drop in the comments, family, and say God has another plan, okay? And so number five is going to be this, y'all. Failed plans, okay? This right here is very similar, but this right here is literally you failed. Failed plans, all right? Bring on what does that look like? Let me tell y'all this right here, y'all. So when I was, you know, doing music, solely music, right? I was all on music, you know? Music was my first love. It was my first passion, okay? And so before I discovered, you know, being able to speak to millions of people, being able to connect and help build up people, personal development, all these things, I was just doing music, right? But what happened was, y'all, God stopped me from going up in that trajectory, right? It's not to say that he's not going to allow me to do it ever, but he stopped me from going in that trajectory, which means he failed me for a small portion of time. Why? Because he wanted to utilize me in a different way. See, you probably have something going on in your life and it failed, right? That business, it failed. That relationship, it failed. That marriage, it failed. The job, it failed. Okay, the thing that you put all your eggs into, you put your hope into it, you put your blood, sweat, and tears to it, everything you had, you put inside it, and it failed. Mm, I know I'm talking to somebody. And so when it failed, you lost hope. You stopped believing. You lost your faith. But I need you to understand something. Pick your head back up. Pick your faith back up. And keep going and keep moving. Because what God has for you is better than what failed. What God has for you is better than what you lost. What God has for you is way better than what you wanted. Okay? He understands the desires of your heart. And he's going to give it to you. So right here, y'all, in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21, it says this right here, family. It says, there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. Let me say it once again, y'all. Louder for my chosen ones in the back. It says there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. I need y'all to realize something. He know we got our own plans. But see, y'all ever heard the saying, if you tell God your plans, then he will laugh. <laughs> if you tell God your plans, he will laugh because you sitting here saying, yeah, you know, I want my four bedroom house. I want my two kids. I want to be married. You know, I want to have my house and my car. I want to do all this. And God's sitting back laughing like, you don't even know I'm going to give you a mansion. You don't even know that I'm going to give you a Bentley. You don't even know that you're going to have six kids. You don't even know that you're going to have your own business and not just a job. You don't know. And guess what? You're going to do it all by serving me. Now, I may not be to this magnitude. Right. But what I'm saying is, is that you think that your plans is your plans when in actuality, the plans that you have are not your plans. God got plans for you and you will be blessed by utilizing and completing the plans that he has for you. Because you got to realize this, y'all. Your desires is going to be parallel to what God's plans are. Right. Once you get in alignment with what God's plans are, he's going to make that your desire. OK. And you're going to be blessed through that. Realize what I'm saying, family. Number six is going to be this, y'all. Betrayal. Yes, sir. It's going to be betrayal. Somebody that you knew. Somebody that you love, somebody that you cared about, right? Somebody who you had your whole trust into, they will betray you, right? And so the reason why this happens is because you need to know that God is the only one that you can trust fully. God is the only one who's going to be there for you. And so a lot of times, y'all, we fall into this idolatry. A lot of times, y'all, we fall into this trap of feeling like this person, this human being, this man, this woman, is the only one who is here for us until they betray you. And then God say, ah, that's a wake-up call. You got to lean on me and only me. See, God wants your attention. And so he's going to allow somebody to betray you just so you can know. See, it's some people who stop praying. It's some people who stop believing. It's some people who stop having faith, right? And they just hang out with their circle. They just take advice from the homeboy. They take advice from the person who they love the most. They just take that advice and they forget to lean on God. Somebody drop in the comments and say, lean on God. Yes, sir. Make sure you drop in the comments, family, and say, lean on God. A lot of people tend to forget that, right? And so what happens is, y'all, they betray you, and then voila, your attention is caught by God. And now he's able to talk to you and let you know what he wants you to know, okay? And so the last one, family, number seven, the spirit will disrupt you. Yes, sir. Let me say a louder for my chosen ones in the back. Listen, family, the spirit will disrupt you. What do you mean by that? It don't matter what you're doing. 
It don't matter wherever you are. That spirit going to come and, and it's going to disrupt you. It's going to make you feel weird. You're going to feel like, man, and what, why am I doing what I'm doing? And why am I not doing what God want me to do? So I tell y'all the time when the spirit hit me. And I'm going to tell y'all the time when the spirit hit Paul, right? Y'all remember the Christian Slayer. So when the spirit hit me, y'all, it was 2019, okay? And I was recording music. I was doing music. That's pretty much y'all would probably consider it as secular music, okay? I used to cuss in my songs. I stopped cussing, but it was still music that was geared to clubs and geared to the streets, if I'm just being honest with y'all. And so what happened was, y'all, I was writing a song. And it was almost like I couldn't write a song no more. And out of nowhere, y'all, I just started crying and crying and crying Because it was like the spirit was telling me, don't do this no more And ever since that day, y'all, in 2019 I never wrote a song that was geared to the streets That was geared to, you know, the clubs That was geared to partying Anything that was negative, I have not wrote a song ever since I've been doing this And I have been creating positive music, alright And so Paul, the Christian Slayer He thought that slaying Christians was good He thought that he was doing the work of God just to find out that everything that he was doing was not for God. It was for Satan because he was killing God's people. And so the spirit bestowed upon him and told him to stop killing and slaying Christians. Okay? Stop doing it. It's not right. And once he realized that it wasn't right, that spirit disrupted his life. That was God speaking to him, trying to get his attention. Hey, Paul, this is not what you're supposed to be doing. Stop doing it. Okay, and so that's what it looks like, y'all, when the spirit disrupts you. So right here in First Corinthians chapter six, verse nineteen through twenty, it says this family. It says, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were brought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Okay, that simply means that your body is not your body; it's God's. That goes back to he puts you in position to display the greatness that he has for you. You, He's going to get the glory, okay? He's going to get the glory and see you're going to be able to be blessed abundantly. Whether that is in, you know, the things that the earth has to give you. However, you sought the kingdom first and everything else was added on to you. So you're doing everything else for God, all right? So understand what I'm saying, family. The spirit will disrupt you, okay? And so for those who resonate with this message, y'all let me know in the comments if y'all have resonated with it. I need y'all to realize something. God wants your attention. And if you are watching this video, you're watching it for a very special and specific reason, okay? So for a quick recap, y'all, before we conclude this video, number one, a tragedy has happened sickness death whatever the case is y'all tragedy number two season of revealing people are beginning to reveal themselves okay because god is allowing it number three isolation you feel alone right now number four slow motion your motion has slowed up but god has everything to do with it number five failed plans okay number six betrayal Number seven, which is the last one, the spirit has disrupted you, okay? Understand what I'm saying, y'all. Once again, y'all, if this has resonated with you, y'all drop in the comments and let me know. I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. Y'all keep a rich mentality. Peace.